Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. I'm making a response to Thomas who made a response on my newest video which is, uh, is, uh, Imam Mahdi, the Antichrist. And, um, Thomas, uh, you know, thank you for responding, I'm glad you watched my video. Um, the only reason why I'm responding to your videos is because you said that I was wrong. You said that I was wrong in, in when I talked about Jesus' second coming. And I think, Thomas, the problem is, and I, and, I, and I realized that in that video, I was speaking rather fast because I was trying to quote this article as quickly as possible when I, my time limit was only 10 minutes, as you well know. So I think you misheard me. And if I actually did um, say this in my video, then, then my apologies. Uh, you say that I said in my video that everyone will accept Jesus as the Messiah before the second or before the day of judgment and then you say that I'm wrong now you're right if I did say that that I am wrong uh, but I do not I do not think I actually put put it like that um, I what I asserted in my video is that when Jesus comes back during his second coming then everyone will accept Islam or everyone will accept Jesus as the Messiah and worship the one God of Israel. That is what I said in my video. I didn't say anything about the fact that everyone before the Day of Judgment will accept Islam. I said that when Jesus comes back during his second coming, everyone will accept him and thus will accept Islam. And my, my source for this, again, is Nar Nar Narratives of the Prophets, this book I've mentioned to you before. And it mentions a hadith. Uh, it mentions a tradition here where it says, uh, quote, let's see here. Let's see. Ah, yes, it will say, this is right after the death of the Dajjal. And it says, the remaining Jews and Christians will accept Islam and join Muslims in spreading Islam. The conversion to Muslims by all holders of Sharia will induce mushrik, i.e. pagans, forces also. They will be killed and remaining com and, 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 and remaining will convert to Islam. In this way, there will be no religion on the face of the earth except Islam, which Allah Almighty had given to the people from the very beginning. So let me read the um, the particular passage where, I, where I'm getting this from. It says, the remaining Jews and Christians will accept Islam and join Muslims in spreading Islam. So this is an Islamic tradition that when Jesus comes back, uh, everyone will accept Islam. Everyone will become Muslim when he comes back during his second coming. So, if you said I was wrong in that regard, I don't believe that I am. Because I'm quoting that from an Islamic source. Now, you mention you mentioned a couple of things, but there's just some things I'm going to, to I'm going to uh, to mention here. Then you go on about the fantastic stories of the second coming of Christ, and you mentioned that uh, you say that the Muslim Jesus cannot be the historical Jesus. And I mean, you know, that we can leave that for another conversation. Uh, but I want to talk about some some references you gave. You say um, Ibn Ishaq mentions a disportation. Um, of Byzantine Christians to the Prophet, and that, um, and that, uh, basically they were talking about uh, certain theological concepts. And you mentioned that the Prophet said uh, that that there were a number of different Christians, some who believe that there was this, that that Jesus is only the Son of God, or that he's part of a Trinity. Or, and then you say that Jesus and Mary are part of a trinity. You say this is from the lips of Muhammad. You say this is Muhammad's confusion. He's confusing Islamic theology. Well, <clears throat> let me quote you the whole story, Thomas, because it's good to read the whole context. This is page 271 of the life of Muhammad, the translation of Ibn Ishaq. And it says, there were Christians, excuse me, uh, it says, they were Christians according to the Byzantine rite, though they differed among themselves in some points, saying he is God, and he is the Son of God, and he is a third person of the Trinity, which is the doctrine of Christianity. So let's pause right there. So, right off the bat, the prophet, uh, or uh, Ibn Asak records that, that these were these were doctrines of Christianity, that Jesus was one of three. Okay, But let's continue. 
They argue that he is God because he used to raise the dead and heal the sick and declare the unseen and make clay birds and then breathe into them so that they flee away. Excuse me, flew away. And all this was by the command of God Almighty. We will make him a sign to men. They argue that he is the son of God and that they say he has he had no known father and he spoke in the cradle and this is something that no child of Adam has ever done. They argue that he is the third of three. So it says that they argue that he is the third of three and that God says we have done, we have commanded, we have created, we have decreed, decreed and they say if he was one he would have said I have done, I have created and soon mm -hmm. But he is, uh, but he is he and Jesus and Mary. Concerning all their assertions, the Quran came down, and then it gets and in, goes into detail on that. Now, the thing that I want to mention is that this is not a direct quote of Muhammad. You said this is Muhammad. That Muhammad said that this was uh, Christian belief. Now, first off, you're right. Uh, the, the Byzantines representing a vast uh, majority and representing a plethora. Of of, vary, of varying Christian beliefs. Now, it does mention that the from the set that the Trinity just believes that Jesus is one of three. But then at the very end, it mentions that yes, there were certain Christians among the Byzantine, uh, the the group of Byzantines that did believe that Jesus and Mary were were divine entities uh, uh, along with God. Now, it gives a list of all the Byzantines that were there. And it mentions the Byzantines were quite a large group. In fact, it says that there are 14, 14 of them. And according to Ibn Asak, these 14 Christians had these varying beliefs amongst them. Now, the thing is, is that this is not something made up by Muhammad. You say that he perhaps he confused uh, something to that effect. Uh, you say, oh, you say that he worshipped, uh, that, 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 that he, that, excuse me, you say that Muhammad thought Mary was worshipped as a divine entity only because of the Quran. Again, that is not true. Again, Ibn Asak does not actually say that. He actually says this is something one of the Christians told Muhammad. And this is true. We do know for a fact that there were Christians that did venerate Mary as divine. And I'm going to post a whole bunch of links to prove this point. Okay. Then you say that, 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 that the Quran or that Muhammad got a lot of these stories about Jesus from... Uh, folk tales that were in his area. I mean, you are right. He didn't, you know, read the Gospels. He was illiterate. But you say that he actually, um, you know, well, you, didn't, you didn't use this word, but I'll summarize. You say he plagiarized a lot of these folk tales from surrounding areas. And I'm going to post the link to IslamicAwareness.org where they refute all of that, Thomas. They refute that the Quran, that, that the sources for the Quran are from these folk tales and things of this nature. And then you quote one scholar, one scholar, uh, who I've never heard of before. So this was kind of interesting. His name is Dr. Ahmed Shafat, and he, you say that he does that he rejects the second coming of Christ hadiths because of uh, because they are apparently weak in transmission or things of this nature. Now the thing is, Thomas, th this guy, and I know this about this individual, he is a Quran onlyist because. At the very end of his article, under Return of Jesus Response 2, he says in his first point, the Quran alone is the foundation of Islam, and he gives this whole spiel about how the Quran is really the only document that uh, Muslims should uh, should should really draw their sources from. And then he kind of tries to throw some uh, he, he, you know some some lesser points against um, against the science of Hadith. In other words, he rejects the science of Hadith. He says that it's not very reliable, and he's really, it's kind of interesting, he, he says that a lot of his huge uh, issue against it is that uh, some of the stories are different among some of the chain of narrations. Of course, Muslims know this, this is not something new, uh, and he, then he says the science of Hadith is, is, cap is capable of considerable for, for further development. So really, he actually doesn't reject the science of Hadith, he just says that Muslims should probably go back and analyze it. But this is one scholar, Thomas. Uh, the majority of Muslim scholars agree the science of Hadith is a sound science. But uh, you're right, this guy does bring this up, but I don't believe he's a strong scholar, quote. Uh, never heard of him before, but he, do he doesn't really reject the Hadith. If you go to the very bottom of his article, he just says that maybe it should be revisited if the science is a, is a developing uh, uh, is, it needs probably need, might need for further development. But he doesn't say outright he rejects everything. 
Thank you everyone for watching. Peace be with you all.